Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to Monday Morning Motivation with John O'Leary. 2021 style, baby. The ball has dropped, the champagne has been uncorked, and we survived 2020. I want to begin by congratulating you on that. As you know by now, we record these so that you may begin your day, your week, and your year in awe and on fire with a burst of inspiration. And I hope for you to embrace all the hope and all the joy that is possible in your new year. I want you to embrace that today. So please allow me to read to you from my number one national best-selling book. It's called, you know it's you know it by now, In Awe. I hope that in hearing these words today, it will remind you of the truth that it is not easy, but the foundation is firm. The best days remain in front of us. So here we go. This is from chapter one, page five. For those of you tuning in at home, uh, what? You, you don't have the book in front of you? That's, that's nonsense. Then for those of you who do not yet have the book in front of you, go to readinawe.com and get your very own version of In Awe today. Go to readinawe.com. Do it right now. You'll be grateful you did. So here we go. This is from chapter one, page five. I'd always dreamed of playing professionally for the St. Louis Cardinals. I just knew that one day I'd put on that uniform I take the field and play for my beloved home team. Those were my dreams at age nine. Similar to the aspirations of other young children, I would imagine. We did not yet know to be realistic with our goals. Yet, even a child knows when it's time to awaken to a grim reality. The fire had robbed me of that dream for playing for that team forever. I'd never hold a baseball I'd never play for the Cardinals or wear the St. Louis Cardinals uniform. Painful as that fact was, I took solace in one beneficial aspect of my injuries. At least I'd never have to take another piano class again. You see, there is a silver lining to every cloud, people. So why on earth was Mrs. Bartello here? Mom approached my wheelchair. She bent down. She released the brakes. She reversed my wheelchair away from the kitchen table and pushed me down the hallway into our family room. Mom, where are you taking me? Instead of answering, Mom humbly, bravely, lovingly pushed me away from the spot where I'd been stuck in that kitchen and moved me toward a new destination, a new perspective. She rolled me to the piano, relatched the brakes, and calmly told Mrs. Bartello she'd be in the kitchen if we needed anything. She then walked out of the room, stranding me alone with Mrs. Bartello. Then, as if nothing had changed in my life in the five months since she'd last seen me, Mrs. Bartello pulled out the sheet music for a song I'd been learning for my mom. Back then, though, I had fingers, but little desire to use them to play piano. That lack of desire remained and was a hurdle we'd have to leap over together. But of course, now it was far from the only one we'd have to leap over together. Looking back, I am amazed that Mrs. Bartello and my mother had the audacity to think that this was possible. How do you ever begin to teach a young boy with no fingers to play the piano? Aren't, after all, fingers a prerequisite? I felt totally useless and utterly confused about what we could possibly do together. But somehow, for some reason, Mrs. Bartello was undeterred. She took out a pencil and a rubber band from her purse. She wrapped the rubber band around my right glove, binding the pencil to the end of my bandages. With this single pencil protruding from my right hand, Mrs. Bartello instructed me to begin playing the notes on the sheet of music. What followed was the longest 30 minutes of my life as I listlessly hit the piano keys with a pencil. I remember distinctly thinking, I hate my mom. I hate my mom. I could not believe she was making me take piano lessons in the condition that I was in. The only good that came out of it was that eventually the lesson ended. At least I'd never have to do that again. I thought it was true. 
until until the following Tuesday when the doorbell rang again, when Mrs. Bartello came back again and then came back the following Tuesday after that and then the following Tuesday after that for five freaking years of Tuesdays with Mrs. Bartello. Gradually, painfully, begrudgingly, note by note, a bewildered boy with no fingers, with ostensibly no chance of returning to life as it once was, learned to play the piano. First, with a single pencil bound to the bandage on his right hand, then one bound to his left. As the wrappings were removed, I learned to play with the tips of my knuckles and by rolling my palm, creating makeshift chords with the parts of my hands that remained. Looking back on those Tuesdays, I realized now that Mrs. Bartello and my mom weren't simply teaching me the piano. They had no expectations that I'd perform at a recital or enter into any competitions downstream. They were instead developing something far more important than musical ability. By releasing the brakes, by releasing those brakes, hear that again. Where are the brakes in your life, my friends? By releasing the brakes of my wheelchair and by pushing me toward a goal that seemed unattainable, by seeing potential and hope where any reasonable person would see only disability, only despair, they delivered a message loud and clear without speaking a word that I needed to hear and that I needed to heed. John... This fire may have robbed you of your fingers, but it did not take your life, and you will not act as if it had. My mom continued, John, you possess the power to do what seems today impossible. You will confront hurdles in your life. You will face difficulties. You will need to come up with innovative ways to overcome the challenges that lie ahead. Things will be different than we had planned. But in time, things will be better than you can even imagine today. So my friends, that is from chapter one, page five, and then six from a book called In Awe. I would imagine 94% of you just read along as I read that back to you. But for the 6% who somehow do not have this book in your hands yet, go to readinawe.com right now. Get your very own copy. I think you'll love it. Um, Do that today. But that is and that was for me a vital message that I needed to hear as a young boy. Back then, I was struggling with uncertainty. I was struggling with self-doubt. I was facing seemingly overwhelming challenges that I could not overcome. This probably sounds similar to the way many of us are stepping out of 2020 and moving boldly, ambitiously into 2021. And yet I'm convinced today that many of us might benefit from hearing and heeding today a similar message as we step into the new year. Though the circumstances might look different. A life-threatening house fire in 2020 that many people dubbed a dumpster fire. Yeah, I believe there are some similarities in these two events in our lives collectively. I believe that feeling of impossibility and that a feeling of being overwhelmed is something that each of us, you and me and everybody else, is feeling right now as we navigate COVID, as we get through this time in our lives, as we seek new opportunities professionally, as we try to rebuild lives relationally for those of us who have lost family members or loved ones during the last year. But rather than shaking your head and crossing your arms and giving up and canceling the piano lesson, whatever that might mean for you, I challenge you today to do something different. I challenge you to look up, to uncross your arms, to embrace both the adversity and the possibility within this day. Let's stop idly looking backward and start confidently stepping forward. Let's acknowledge the journey is not easy, but it is possible. And let's celebrate that the vaccine is working. It is spreading, people. This is good news. That the days are lengthening. This is also good news. Light is returning. And that the best days remain ahead. My friends, buckle up. 2021 is going to be your best year yet. And I'm looking forward to living into that with you in this year to come. So for this time, And until next time, my name is John O'Leary. I'm seated at the piano bench today. This is your day. Pull up a chair. Join me. Live inspired.